Now let's look at Hund's rules. Now you may have already heard of the first Hund's rule, which is the uh, maximum multiplicity is the lowest energy. And you, and you might think that this is really about having all of the orbitals spin aligned and spread out, but we can get a little bit better def definition on these rules and relate it to our free ion terms. So the first Hund's rule is that the maximum spin multiplicity is the lowest energy term. And then the second rule is if two or more terms have the same spin multiplicity, so rule number one does not completely decide it by itself, then you go with the highest L quantum number. Next, you look at the J values. And if the subshell is less than half full, then the lowest J value is the ground state. And if it is more than half full, then the highest J value is the ground state. And if it is half full, then there will only be one J value for that particular state. So let's go back to one of our examples, which is the D2, and order these states from lowest to highest energy. So if you recall, we had a triplet F, and we had triplet P. And so between these two, well, we had triplet P, F, triplet P, singlet G, singlet D, singlet S, right? So the two triplet uh, states will have the lower energy. And then since we have two of them, we'll look at the highest L. The highest L is the corresponding to F. So triplet F. We had three J values for the triplet F ion term. So I'll write those out. And when we have a less than half full, and D2 is definitely less than half full, then the lowest J value is the ground state. So we'll count up in J values. And the possible ones that we determined were two, three, and four. Next term, uh, next lowest energy, will be the triplet P. And again, this had three J values, uh, starting with zero and going up to two. Now we're done with the triplet states. We can move on to singlet G. And G has the highest L value out of everything that I've indicated here. But again, rule number one takes precedence. So that's why the triplet states are lower in energy than the singlet states, even though this has a higher L value. And we'll just write the J value there's only one. Next would be the singlet D, which is that term. And then finally, the highest energy term is the singlet S. We'll use these to examine electronic spectra. Now, when you're looking at this and you're trying to do something that's more than half full, just remember that you have the highest J value is the ground state. And so the order of these terms will be reversed. Now, you may question just how to do all of those microstates and everything for something that is 
like D8, right? Because there's eight electrons, and how do I keep track of all of the positions of those electrons? Well, I'm going to simplify things for you a little bit here. D8 will have exactly the same free ion terms as D2. You can think of that instead of there being eight electrons, there's two holes, two positions without an electron. And there will be the same combination of holes as there are if there's just two electrons. And so if you're asked to do a problem where there's a, a more than half filled orbital, it's probably easier to solve the symmetrical problem with the fewer number of electrons to keep track of. And so do that. Now, just keep in mind that when you're producing the order of lowest energy to highest energy, that you reverse the J values in the case where it's more than half full. And that's the only cravat that you need to remember in that case, but that can save you a significant amount of time. And in a lot of these cases, you may wish to, uh, if it gets complicated enough, see if you can find a reference that already has them noted out for you. So this is about Hund's rules and how to determine which term is the lowest energy and put them in order.